Time is fast approaching for the UK to sever its ties with the European Union. Although technically the UK left the EU on the 31st of January 2020, we were given an 11 month transition period to allow for months of negotiation between the two parties before the final departure date of the 31st of December 2020, which is only a few days away. The big question on everyone's lips is whether we will leave the EU with a deal or without a deal. But more importantly, what I want to know is how does this actually affect us in our day-to-day -day lives and how does it affect us financially? That's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. <laughs> Who would have thought at the very beginning of this year that Brexit wouldn't be the number one topic on people's minds as we approach the deadline? But rather, unfortunately, it is actually the COVID pandemic which has stolen the spotlight and has had dire effects on economies worldwide. Which means that we really can't think of a post-Brexit life without considering what impacts COVID has also had on the economy and onto our day-to-day -day lives. As a lot of the factors that I'm about to mention are likely to be impacted by both Brexit as well as COVID-19. Now, the first factor that we'll look at is interest rates. Now, interest rates are currently sitting at 0.1%. When the Bank of England cut interest rates further from 0.25% to 0.1% earlier this year in March. Now, the logic of why the Bank of England tends to cut its interest rates is that it typically stimulates an economy. It encourages people to spend more as interest rates will be lower if it was just sitting in a savings account. And it also encourages borrowing as borrowing will typically be cheap. Now, you could argue that the Bank of England could try to cut interest rates to stimulate the economy after we leave the EU. However, I don't really see this happening as the interest rate is already incredibly low and any further cuts to this doesn't really have much of an impact. That's why regardless of the outcome, whether we leave Brexit with a deal or without, I still see the interest rate staying at 0.1%. KPMG, which is an accountancy firm, also predict that interest rates will stay fixed for the rest of 2021. Now, the second factor that we're gonna look at is how does Brexit impact our investments? Now, the whole notion of Brexit means uncertainty of the future. And unfortunately, markets don't like uncertainty, and this usually results in volatile markets, and usually in the bad sense. When the referendum was called in 2016 that we were going to leave the EU, that caused the FTSE 100 to drop 9% in the following week. I think it's sensible to assume that with such a big historical event like Brexit, markets will behave very similarly as they did way back in 2016, especially if we leave with a no deal, where we can probably expect that the market will behave even worse so than it did in 2016. Although the possibility of a no deal Brexit is quite a scary outlook for our market, and it's typically not what people want to hear as they go about their day-to-day -day lives, but we can actually flip this on its head and look at this more of as an opportunity to invest in the long run. Now, as you may be aware, holding onto your investments over the long term increases your chances of your investments going on an upward positive trend. So we can take this opportunity to buy investments while they're cheap and then reap the rewards a little bit later down the line. All we have to do is ride out the bumps along the way. Now, this is not an uncommon thing. The investor Warren Buffett is actually known to practice in this type of method. And if you really think about it, it does make a lot of sense. We really need to be investing when the market is actually at its cheapest, which usually is accustomed to when there's a crash, and then we sell it when it's on a high. Now, I know this type of investing can make some feel uncomfortable as the whole notion of investing in the market when times are rough doesn't really make sense. But if you think about it objectively, this really is what we should all be doing investing when markets are low and selling them off when they're high. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Are you someone that is comfortable in following this type of method or does this kind of make you uncomfortable? Be great to hear from you. Now, the next factor is how will Brexit affect our food shopping? Now, if a no deal is reached, the UK will have to start trading within the World Trade Organization rules, which means that all of our imports and all of our exports will be subject to border control, quotas and tariffs. Now, EU tariffs are relatively low. For example, medicine isn't actually subject to tariffs under the WTO rules, but there are some sectors where tariffs are a lot higher. For example, cars will be taxed 10%, dairy products 35%, and cheese and beef 
will be charged up to 50% in tariffs. Now, obviously these tariffs will have an impact on businesses trading in these goods, and this will likely be reflected back on us as prices are likely to increase as a result. It has also been reported that supermarkets have been stockpiling goods following a government warning of a no deal Brexit. This is to try and stop spikes in prices, as well as ensuring that we have enough supply to meet the demands as we go over the early stages of this transition period. So stockpiling is all well and good, but this doesn't really work for perishable goods. So we can probably expect that these goods are likely to be quite volatile in supply and price as we move into the early phases of Brexit. And with approximately 30% of food from our supermarkets being imported from the EU, we are most likely definitely gonna see an increase in our food bill if a no deal is reached. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far and you would like to support this channel, be sure to like, comment and subscribe with notification bell on. I release a video every single Monday talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. The next topic is house prices. How is Brexit going to affect the housing market? Now this is actually a difficult one to dissect as COVID has had a massive part to play in how the market is behaving at the moment. The housing market actually grew by 6.5% this year, which is far greater than what was initially predicted at the very beginning of the year. This has obviously been helped by incredibly low interest rates and the introduction of the stamp duty tax holiday. However, this market can only really be sustained if people can actually pay off their mortgages. And with COVID plaguing the UK employment market, this has likely meant that the housing market is a bubble pretty much waiting to be burst. And adding a no deal Brexit into the mix might just be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Now onto the last factor, how will Brexit affect our travel to EU countries? Now this is quite a big topic, so I've broken it down into your typical FAQ questions to try and make things a bit clearer. Now the first question is, will you need a new passport? The answer is no. Your passport is still valid if it is less than 10 years old, and it has at least six months before its expiration date. Now the six month rule doesn't actually apply when traveling to Ireland as that is part of the common travel area. And also your new passports will now be blue. The second question is, do you need a visa to travel to the EU? As a tourist, you're able to travel to most of the EU countries plus Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Norway and Iceland without a visa. You're able to stay up to 90 days in any 180 day rolling period. So so for example, if you stayed in Spain for 14 days in January, and then you followed this up with another seven day trip to Italy in March, both of these will count, so 21 days will count towards your 90 day allowance. Now there are some countries that have an exception to this rule. These countries are Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus and Romania. So if you travel to these countries, any days you stay there won't count towards your 90 day allowance. I would expect some teething problems at the very beginning of this transition phase. Um, so please account for longer waiting times at airports, border control, et cetera, et cetera. However, I mean, with COVID the way it is, it might not have as much of an impact on waiting times if things were just relatively normal. Now, these rules are only in place for 2021. From 2022 onwards, although this is all still TBC, it is likely that we will have to pay for a visa wavering scheme. So this will cost roughly six to seven pounds to travel to EU countries. How does this affect your right to claim on flight delay compensation? Now, this was originally an EU law that allowed consumers the right to gain compensation if their flight was canceled or delayed. Now, this will still remain the case post Brexit, the EU regulation that pretty much defines this rule, which is dubbed as EC261, very catchy, has actually been introduced into British law. How does this affect you driving in the EU? So after Brexit, you have to present your UK driving license, your logbook, plus valid insurance documents that state you are allowed to drive in Europe. Only with these three things will you be granted permission to drive a car in any of the European countries. If you take your own car, you may need a green card or proof of insurance, plus a very fancy GB sticker. Now moving on to mobile roaming charges. Now it's quite hard to imagine life without the roam like you're at home scheme. This allows you to make calls, texts, and use your data in EU countries while still using your UK allowance. 
Post Brexit, there is no guarantee that this is set to continue. This is going to be ultimately left up to the mobile providers themselves to decide whether they want to carry on with the scheme or not. At the moment, the major players like EE, O2, Vodafone and 3 have said that they have no plans to charge customers if they use their phone abroad. But of course, with time, this can still change. For one additional point, there was a new UK law that was passed earlier this year, which protects UK travellers from getting surprise mobile charges of over 45 pounds when they use their phone abroad. They also introduced measures to ensure that customers are kept up to date from their mobile provider if they get very close to their data usage limit. Is the European health insurance card still valid post Brexit? The answer again is no. Post Brexit, the EHIC card will no longer be valid for UK travellers, which means that medical treatment will not be made available to us travelling Brits at European public hospitals. So it's really important that you do sort out your travel insurance whenever you are travelling to Europe now, that it includes medical cover, because you never know when you might need it. There are some exceptions to this rule. These cards are still available for UK state pensioners that have been living in the EU before the 31st of December 2020, and for UK students doing an EU course. But you still have to do something. You will have to apply for a new one of these cards as your current EHIC card will no longer be valid. And finally, where should you queue when you reach passport control at the EU country? It's gonna be the long queue, sadly. We are no longer eligible to go through the EU fast track lanes, so please do account for some extra time when you are going through border control at the subsequent EU countries. Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. I hope you found that really interesting. I know I did when I was researching all of this information. Please let me know in the comment section down below if you are preparing anything financially for the post-Brexit days. And of course, if you did like this video, I would really, really appreciate if you do smash that like button that does wonders for the algorithm and the growth of my channel and i release a video every single monday so if you want to keep up to date with those be sure to hit the subscribe button as well see you later Bye.